Hello and welcome to an ANOVA Systems webinar. My name is Sam Bromley and I'm going to show you the new features in PhotoView 360 2013. Okay, so I'm going to flick over to SolidWorks and what I'm going to show you first off is just setting up a very simple scene to then create your render from. Now I think this is a very important process to show. Not much has changed from 2012 to 2013 regarding this. It's definitely an important workflow which I think is very useful. Now I've honed this process and I think it's uh, one way of getting through um, visually what your render is going to look like, especially when you come to render it. Because there's a big difference between the way in which SolidWorks renders in its scene at the moment and what it will look like when we come to do our final render. Now what it's using at the moment to render this scene is what we call real view graphics. Now, the way in which those appearances are displayed in real view are very different to what they're going to appear to look like when we come to do the final render itself. So what I'd like to do is I've split the viewport in two, so I've got two separate views here. And what I can do in my right-hand view is I'm going to set it to isometric, rotate it around a little bit. And then while this current view is clicked on and is active, I'm going to turn on the integrated preview. So the integrated preview will turn on and it gives me a, a better representation of how it's going to look when I come to do the final render. Which means I've got freedom on the left hand to rotate around my model, do whatever I want with it, apply new appearances, change the scene, put new lights in, put a camera in, and that's going to reflect directly through on the right hand pane that I've got. Okay, so another important thing we might want to do here is go about inserting a camera. So cameras allow us to, to position and, and create a shot very precisely. Quite simply, I'm going to go to View, Lights and Cameras, and add a camera. I can target the position of the camera by selection in my scene, like so. And I can move that around and just position it as I, as I want. Now, if I'm interested in seeing exactly what's going to happen within that aperture there, on the right-hand side, I can click the spacebar and set to my camera. Now means as I move my camera around, it's going to update on the right-hand side. So not getting, we won't just get an update of the graphics, but also get an update of how that camera is going to, how it's going to appear. So I can move that camera around, zoom it in, etc. There's a few controls that I can change here. So I can rotate the camera. I can change its field of view so it's distance from the object, the size of the aperture, the size of the pane, and the height of the of the rectangle that we created here. I can simply drag and resize that if I wanted to as well. Now an important thing we might want to turn on is what we call depth of field. Depth of field adds a little more, bit more realism to your to your renders because it will add a, a focal depth. We can also position our focal depth by selection as well. So if I zoom into this area, select that face, you see that the panes themselves have moved to a position which is now intersecting the model. We've got two panes on the maximum and the minimum focal depth. We can control that, and we're going to want to get that so that the focal depth actually has a range that intersects the model here. The reason being is if, if those panes were entirely engulfing our model, everything would be in focus. And there's no point having a depth of field if everything's going to be in focus. So that's my camera added. And what you will notice on the right-hand side, it's going to turn the integrated preview back on again, is that it's looking through the camera. So we get a really good representation of how that's going to look. Okay. Now, one thing I'd like to show you next, just after I've shown you how to set up a scene, is how to now use the added ability to use what we call Luxology materials. So I'm just going to flick over to the Luxology website. Here it is. And in 2013, we now have the ability to use um, a community shared resource, which allows us to download existing appearances from the Luxology website. So instead of using the default database within SolidWorks, or perhaps creating your own, we now have the ability to download from this database. I'm going to go to materials. You see there's lots of different materials in here, lots of different categories. We can also search any of these categories as well. So if I say wood, you see we get a load of wood appearances come through. It's a really, really useful resource now that we can utilize. Okay, I'm just going to flick back over to SolidWorks. We're going to have a look at those appearances, um, actually applying them in a, in a later on in the demo. Now, we get a few new options within the appearances um, of our models. I'm just going to edit the appearance of this, uh, this guitar here and go to illumination. 
Now, one key thing that's changed here is the ability to go about changing a few of these options because tweaking those appearances is always an important thing for us to do. Now, on the illumination tab, there's a new option at the very bottom here. It's called round sharp edges. Now, if you think about it, there's no such thing as a sharp edge. Okay, the reason we create a model in SolidWorks, but in reality there isn't. You may physically put a rad on something, okay, to fill it, um, and may believe that you've got a sharp edge in something, but realistically, if you were to keep zooming in on that sharp edge, it's not sharp. Okay, now what this allows us to do allows us to round those sharp edges. So when a sharp edge it sees, it will put a little fillet on them. We won't actually apply a fillet in your feature tree; it does it visually. It sees there's a sharp edge there. That's a really useful tool for us to use there, adds much more realism to our models. Now, one major change within 2012 to 2013 in regards to photo view is the ability to change the way in which your renders are going to be output. So I'm just going to recall a few of my uh, my final renders here, bring some of those back, and. We're going to have a look at this this render here. We've got a pink guitar. Okay. We're going to change a few of those colours there. Now, what you'll find first off is that we've got these thumbnails on the bottom that show all our previous renders. We can still zoom in and out of these images that we've got. Key important thing now is this post processing tab that we've got here called image processing. So instead of take, taking your final renders into a package like um, Photoshop. We can now go about just changing and changing a few of those options within SolidWorks before we even do that. So we might not even have to do that anymore. Now we have a control over colors. Okay, so the color that are sort of being displayed there, we can change those, which is an interesting thing we can do. Make it a bit more realistic here. See the arrow that appears on the screen? That's the over here. That's the initial color that was set. Control the intensity of the uh, sort of the the alpha channel, so to speak. Okay, the gamma. Interesting one to do. Have a huge range of different options that we can change here. We've got options to change the saturation of color, the levels themselves, so, so how the colors display, which colors display perhaps more vividly than others. So a huge amount of options that we can use. A great new tool that we can do is we can compare images. So up here we've got compare. I'm going to select two images holding control. I'm going to say compare with second selected image. And what we get on our screen is this bar, which allows me quite simply to be able to slide around. So I can compare perhaps not only the color that I've applied here, or the appearance that was applied at SolidWorks level, but even the changes in gamma. Okay, So I can assess what I think is a better render. But obviously I'd go for the one that isn't blue, a bit more realistic. On the far right hand pane we've got here, we've got stats. We always used to have stats, but what we can now do is we can compare those stats from image one and image two. And it's a nice way, perhaps, of seeing um, you know, how long it takes to do something which has got a bit more geometry to it, a bit more surfaces. Okay, That's an interesting one that we might want to have a look at. Okay, now a few more things I want to point out. A great addition to 2013 is the ability to network render. So network rendering allows me to share a rendering job through different machines, as long as they're connected to each other. Now what you find here is I've got a I've got a button here called network rendering. First I've got to make sure I turn that on, so network rendering is going to be enabled. But another very key thing you need to consider here is that you've got your network set up correctly. So what you'll have, you just have a computer called a coordinator, and you have some computers called nodes. The coordinator is the manager. Nodes are sort of the slaves to the coordinator, and they will then share and help with that processing of that job. Now, if we go to the settings of that, I'm going to point a few of those out. Let's go to SolidWork Tools, and then SolidWorks Network Monitor. What you've got here is we set our coordinator. So we set our coordinator by its name. Okay, and then what we do is we go to the no computers, and in this name of coordinator here, we need to make sure that we actually put in the coordinator's name, the computer name itself, and then connect to it. 
And that's all we have to do. And when we come to then do a render, we'll see that it actually helps with that. And I'll point out exactly what's going to be occurring there. Okay, so the last thing I want to have a look at is applying some, um, some modo appearances to an existing model. Let's just flip over to the model that I've got open here. Now, let's go to appearances. And we'll see I've got a new folder down here called Luxology Appearances. Now, you can't put Luxology Appearances into your existing database. You need to make a new folder. So make a new folder on your C drive, whatever it might be. And you can add a new folder by clicking on Appearances at the top and hitting Add New File Location. So I've got Luxology Appearances. I've got a glass in here. And I think you can apply that to the glass of this, apply it to the body. And what you see is it appears grey. Modo appearances will not display as you'd expect them to do in SOLIDWORKS. They will only show when you come to do a final render. Okay, so bear that in mind. They are so all slightly limited in regards to the options that you can change. When I say slightly, quite a lot actually. You see here that you don't really have any control over the colour okay, or the illumination properties of that. So bear that in mind. Now, I also want to apply a material to the body of wine, which is inside this glass as well. So I've got a wine mode appearance that I've downloaded. Let's try and drop that in, apply it to the body, let's bring the other body back, and I'm going to do a final render. Let's make sure my perspective's turned on. I'm going to make sure that's always turned on when we do a render, otherwise it might look a bit odd. And I'm going to do a final render. Now what we're going to get here is something quite familiar to a lot of you, is we're going to get the same processes there. Okay, it's going to start going back creating that render. Now what you will find is that um, if you have actually got turned on network rendering, this is when that's going to kick in. So your other node machines are going to help quite helping the coordinator in processing that image. So what we can see here is I've got these orange squares that have appeared on my screen. So those orange squares correspond to the amount of cores that I've got on my computer. So in my processor, I've got eight cores, so I see eight squares. Now if I was sharing this process with a node computer, what you'd get is you'd get its processes coming on your screen as well, and they would show in blue, okay? So it's always very obvious to see exactly what's actually happening to your renders themselves. And you'll see here that those orange squares are, are sort of focusing a little bit more and spending a bit more time on those transparent areas. I've got lots of layers of transparency here. Layers of transparency always take a little bit longer than the rest of the, um, rest of the, the model itself. And there we have it. Now, this is when we actually can really look at how Good those modo appearances are. We get some really nice refraction of light on the glass itself, and we get a glow of that red that's coming through through the sort of the wine appearance that I've put on. So really great resources for you. It's just you know a really great that we've got access to that now. Okay, so that's just showing you know a few of the th new things within the, the Photo View uh, 360 in 2013. Um, I just want to thank you for, for watching and I hope this has been a useful um, webinar for you um, and feel free to tune in for any future webinars, they're always on Thursday at 10 o'clock throughout the year, um, please feel free to tune in and do get in contact as well if you've got any questions at all at support at innova-systems.co.uk or likewise just give us a ring on 01223 200 699 and again thank you for watching and I hope this has been useful.